In this video, we're going to discuss the concept of continuity. I decided to, to skip ahead and go over continuity right now at this point in the playlist, right after we go through limits for the first time and then interpret graphical limits because I want to talk about continuity before we start working example pro limit example problems. I think working limit problems, no matter how easy or difficult, is much easier, much more intuitive after you understand the concept of continuity. Okay, so even if this is your first time, if you're taking calculus for the first time, I think most of you have an, have an intuitive idea of what it means for a function to be continuous. So this is not an official definition, but a way that I've found to understand what continuity means that I've found to be really, really helpful is that if you can draw the function without picking up your pen off the page, then it's continuous. Now, I want to specify, though, when, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I say a function is continuous, I'm, I'm really talking about more of an interval because you could have a function that's continuous through for all real numbers like a like a polynomial you can draw a polynomial start at negative infinity and then draw it all the way to positive infinity and you don't have to and you, you never pick up your pen off the page but you could have a function like one over x and so if if x is greater than zero then the function's continuous for all for all x greater than zero because you can draw it and then all the way to infinity, it never, you never pick up your pen off the page. Same thing if x is less than 0, it's continuous for all x. It's just not continuous at 0 because if I want to draw the function and cross over 0, I have to stop, pick up my pen, and come back here. So it's not continuous at 0. It's continuous everywhere else, just not at 0. So... You see how you can say that, so when, when you say something's continuous, you're, you, a lot of times you're specifying an interval. 1 over x is continuous from here to here. So the, the pin on the page analogy I always found to be really helpful. <clears throat> and a, but here, here's, here's the, the official definition of continuous, though. A function f is continuous at a number a if the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to f of a. Okay, so that's, that's what this talks about here. It says, notice that, the, that the, the definition of continuity implicitly requires three things if f is continuous at a. f of a is defined. So, so yeah, you have to be able to plug in a number and get, and get out a value, a finite value, just in the general function. The limit as x approaches a of f of x exists, right? So, so looking, so, so coming here to this, to this graph, you could have a situation where f of a is defined, so f of 5 is equal to this. Well, no, let's come here, okay? Yeah, f of 3, f of 3, see it's closed, cl closed circle here, so f of 3 is defined, but in, but the limit as x approaches 3 doesn't exist. 3 in general doesn't exist. Okay? So you see those two scenarios? So these two need to be taking place at the same time. And then also the limit as x per se of f of x needs to be equal to f of a. So that's when you come here. f of a is defined to be like, so at f, at f, of, f of 5 is this. The limit also exists. Great. We've got two of the requirements, the first two, but f of 5 is not equal to the limit. Okay, and you come, so coming here to this scenario, the limit exists, but there's no f of a. f of a is not defined. So f of a is not defined, and so there's no, so if this, this, if this doesn't, if this requirement isn't satisfied, then this requirement can't be satisfied because there's no f there's no f of a. Okay, then they they officially define what it means for for something to be discontinuous. If f is defined near a, we say that f is 
discontinuous at A, if, if what? If F is not continuous at A. So, all right. The, what you want to notice about this paragraph is, okay, so it's simple enough, right? F is discontinuous at A means that F is not continuous at A, obviously. But, but you, might, you might not notice this at first. This is only if, only if F is defined near A. So what, what does that mean? I could say, th th this is a function. I, I could say this. I'm going to make a function right now. So y, x, my function is, so y is equal to 3, and the domain is when x is equal to 1. And, so that, and that's it. So x is equal to 1. Let me, I'm going to plot this function. That's, that's the function. It's undefined, it's, it's undefined everywhere else. Okay, I can draw this function without picking my pen up off the page. I just did it. So it's continuous. No, because f is not, this, this f here, or this y here, is not defined near a. So this, this isn't a discontinuity. You've got to have things going on around a. You see the difference? Okay, so then it gets into some example problems on identifying continuity. We're going to uh, have videos where we do a bunch of these examples. Okay, and then here... It's talking about the, uh, the different types of discontinuities. You have removable, infinite, and jump discontinuities. That's the only three types of discontinuities. If you have any, there's, for any function, unless there's some higher level mathematics that I don't know about where they, def they define new dot discontinuities. For functions in calculus one, calculus two, calculus three, just the, the general functions we deal with, piecewise functions, the all the special functions, these are the three types of discontinuities. Okay, so, so here, this function, if, so you'll see this kind of problem, um, this kind of limit problem, where you have to take a limit of a function like this. You'll, you'll see a bunch of these. And what this is, is if you factor the denominator or, or the numerator, you end up getting, you end up getting what's in the, the, the denominator. So this would be, Let's see, the numerator factors to x minus 2 and x plus 1. So then the x minus 2s cancel, and you're left with x plus 1. That's what it simplifies to. So this is, this is the line x plus 1. But you have to put a hole at x is equal to 2 because the original function isn't defined at x is equal to 2. Even though it simplifies to x plus 1, but you have to look at what your, what your original function was, was your, your original requirement. If you put this into Excel, this function into Excel, and then you can put any input you want, that's what, but you can, so you'd put anything, any input in, and, and this, is, this is the relation, but if you put 2, it would give you an error. So you, you see how that works? And, okay, and this is called a removable discontinuity, and, it, and the reason is because it says we can remove the discontinuity by redefining f at just the single number 2. So it's, I guess it's removable because we can easily just say we're going to define f of 2 to be 3, and we've removed the discontinuity. Okay, now here, this is the, 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 um, a, a vertical asymptote, right? So a vertical asymptote is where the function, as x approaches a, a single value, X approaches one or X approaches three. So like X is equal to three or X is equal to a number is plotted as a vertical line. And so as, so if you have like a, a, a limit as X approaches a, a number, in other words, as, in other words, as X approaches a vertical line, if X is going to infinity, then that line is called a vertical asymptote. And this, in this, and this is a discontinuity. It's called an infinite discontinuity because we know at vertical asymptotes, you, 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 you have to, for all vertical asymptotes, you have to pick up your pen off the page to cross over it. So those are discontinuities. They're called infinite discontinuities. Here is this same function in the first part, but they, they define the whole to be at, at, 
at x is equal to 2 to be equal to 1. But this is still discontinuity because you have to stop, pick up your pen, and then continue. But this is a removable discontinuity once again because I could just redefine this f of, f of 2 to be 3, and now I've removed this, the discontinuity. All right? Now, the, the third type of discontinuity is a jump discontinuity because the function jumps from one value to another. So, yeah, discontinuity, you've got to pick up your pen, jump. And so this is not removable because I can't just say, all right, I'm going to define the function to be, you know, I have to draw like a new curve almost. I can't just, it's not easily removable. You can talk about the idea of a function being continuous from the left or the right. So here, the function isn't continuous, but like it, this is con it is continuous from the left or from the right. I'm sorry, from the right. And so it's that, that defi that's defined using one-sided limits. If the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x is equal to f of a, then it's continuous from the right. Okay, if f and g are continuous at a and c is a constant, then the following functions are also continuous at a. And so the idea of adding two functions, so you, you, you could have, I could have this greatest integer function, or no, I could have a, a heavy stock function. All right, and I could also have a polynomial. So I've got some polynomial, and I want to add that to a heavy side function. But yeah, you can think about that. You just just come at every at every spot at every x. Just add them up. So the function won't change here, and then and then. You, the, 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 it's just the poly that's, you're adding zero to the polynomial in this region, you're adding one or whatever you have the, whatever this is, whatever you have the heavy side function defined as, you're adding this constant value here to the polynomial. And so you can think about, well, what is, is this, is this result continuous? And really what you're asking is, what, what's, what happens at the discontinuity? So you can see this is all of a sudden going to go, you'll have a hole here, this will be shifted up. And all of this will go away. And that's the result. So you, you see how you can think about the idea of, how you can think about the idea of adding functions and multiplying functions. And this is just giving you rules on you know, if you add two continuous functions, well, you know, if they're continuous at A or over an interval, right? So, like, when, if we're just talking about adding the heavy side function and the polynomial in th over this interval, then, th then both of these functions are continuous in that interval. So, we can apply this, and we'll, we're going to get a continuous function. But, it, there, but if it's over an interval where there's a discontinuity, that's not the case. It's, we, we, it's not giving us information about that. And you can think about that in terms of multiplying and subtracting and dividing. Okay. So then here, it's saying, it's okay, theorem. Any polynomial is continuous everywhere. That it is continuous for, um, for all numbers minus infinity to infinity. Any rational function is continuous everywhere. It is defined. That is, it is, it is continuous in its, on its domain. Yes, yeah, so you can think about a polynomial function as continuous everywhere. Rational functions, you can draw you can draw both of these functions without picking up your pen off the page everywhere except for if you're dividing by zero in the rational function. And so we can we can skip over to here, and it, it what it tells you is that for, so for all of these functions, which are all of the functions like the 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 of the, of the basic standard functions that we're familiar with that we learn in algebra. So this is algebra and trigonometry. So polynomials, rational functions, roots, like square roots, cube roots, trig functions, inverse trig functions, exponentials, logarithms. As long as it's in the domain of the function, 
So like a logarithm, you can't you can't put a, a zero or negative number into a logarithm. You know, uh, even roots, you can't put a negative number. But as long as you as long as it's in the domain, so you can put a number and and get, and get a value out, then it's saying the function is continuous. And and think about that. Think and, and you 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 know this because of all these functions of all these functions. Do you ever can you can you think can you think of any of these where to to draw this function you're doing something like this where you're you're doing say no, no none of these functions are like that that's that's like piecewise functions where it's where you've got you know and then they 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 give us something here when x is this and then something there when x is that it's none of these standard functions do anything like this. Yeah, there's, you know, there's, there's parts where they're not defined. So, you know, like a, like a, like a rational function. Right, it's not defined here. But as long as you can put the number into the domain, in, like, in, in, as long as it, the, the, the function exists, then, it, then you can always draw any of, the, any of these functions without picking up your pen off the page. Okay, this theorem, if f is continuous at b and the limit as x approaches a of g of x is equal to b, then the limit as x approaches a of f of g of x is equal to b. This, this, is, a, this is a powerful theorem. Um, and again, I'm not going to work any problems where you have to do a limit and, and then explicitly show your proof of, of, of like you know, every step you do, show the theorem you used or, or whatnot. But th this general idea... Can be used for some like for a really complicated limit problem, and so it it like if you have the limit as x approaches this three, and so of x squared e to the log of square root of 2 to the x minus 4x plus 3. Okay? Well, that's scary. Like, how, how do I even start to, com to compute this limit? But what you can think about is gr group, like, so, so groups of x terms or, or just like a single x term, that, that's, you, you can evaluate that limit kind of in its own little world it's 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 this this two to the x doesn't know what four four x is doing it doesn't know what x squared is doing so you can say okay what what is as x approaches three what is two to the x doing just looking at two to the x by itself two to the x is going to two cubed this is this term if you just look at this in a vacuum look at this by itself this term is going to be going to eight it's going to get closer and closer and closer to eight that's all it's doing. It's, that's all it knows is 2 to the x. This 4x, all it knows is it's going to be getting closer and closer and closer to 12. This 3 is just going to stay a 3 no matter what. There's no, it's not associated with an x. So this limit of, of just the, this term here is going to, so minus 4 plus 3, this is going to minus 1. All right? So th this here... As x approaches 3, this 2 to the x minus 4x plus 3 is approaching negative 1. Okay? So what is the square root of negative 1 approaching? That doesn't exist. So, that, so that's it. This whole limit doesn't exist because you can't do anything else. It doesn't matter what x squared is doing because you're not going to be able to, this isn't going to be able to be evaluated to anything. But if you, you know, if... If this was 4, you could say that this is approaching, so 2 to the 4th power is 16 minus 8, minus 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3 is 11. So this is approaching 11, so square root of 11 is, is a number. Log of the square root of 11 is a number. e to the log of the square root of 11 is a number. x squared, as x approaches 4, if x squared is, is 16. So this limit is going to 16e to the log 
and the square root of 11. That's a number. So like same idea, if you've got x squared plus 3x minus 2 to the fourth, limit as x approaches 1, then you, then you can just, that, that, that's what this is saying, that's what this is saying. You can just say, just ignore this 4 here. And, and just look at this independently. What is this, this polynomial doing as x approaches 1? Okay, so 1 plus, okay, plus 3, 4 minus 2. This is going to 2. So, so the limit is 2 to the 4th, but what they're saying here more officially is you can write this as this is the same thing as the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared plus 3x minus 2 to the fourth power, which is, which is the same idea as what I was doing here. So you evaluate this limit first, and then just take it, and then that, you take the fourth power. Okay, this is where we, it's, it's in this section where we're introduced to the, to the intermediate value theorem. You may have heard of this already, but if you're, this is your first time taking calculus, then you, you've never heard of, it, heard of this. But so, so this, this says that suppose that F is continuous on the closed interval AB and let N be any number between F of A and F of B, where F of A is not equal to F of B. Then there exists a number C in AB such that F of C is equal to N. All right, so let me put this in non-math simple terms first. What this is saying is you've got, you've got a function. The function's continuous, at least on the interval that you're talking about. And then you've got this, and then you evaluate the function at A, and then you evaluate the function at B. And when you do that, but F of A is not equal to F of B, though. That can't be the case. So there's some distance between F of A and F of B. The function is continuous, and there's some distance between F of A and F of B. Now you want to draw the function. You want to start at F of A and draw the function. So like this is like the non-math uh, way of understanding this theorem. So you want to draw the function starting at f of a and go to f of b. Well, the function is continuous, so what does that mean? To draw the function, you're never going to pick up your pen off the page all the way to f of b. And so what the theorem is saying is that it is a fact that you can pick any number in but that's between f of a and f of b, and there will be a value of C in this interval A, B to where F of C is equal to N. I mean, that you, you see basically that it has to be because you have to, to draw this function. You have to, there's no way of getting to F of B. If you can't pick up your pen off the page, there's no way of getting to F of B unless you cross over every single possible value between F of A and F of B. And this seems kind of just a pointless definition, like isn't like obviously, right? But the, the mathematicians will use this to prove stuff, you see. And so, look, like you know, here's like a C1, C2, C3. Well, oh, the, okay, there's more than one value. There's more than one C that corresponds to N, but that can be the case. But it doesn't, it's still, yeah, you've got more than one C that corresponds to N, but it, it, the definition, the, the theorem still holds. Okay, pick another value of N. Pick any value of N you want. There will be at least one, F of, there, one C value to where F of C is equal to the number you picked. Okay, and they give an example here, show here that there is a root of the equation. And so we'll, we'll, I, we, I'll consider making a video where we do an example of the intermediate value theorem. You're proving that there's a root. So again, this is like math, like, like mathematician stuff where we know that there's a root. Like there might not be, there, there, if, if all of the roots of this equation are imaginary, then there is no root that crosses the the x-axis, and that can be the case, but if we find a non-imaginary root of this after we factor, well, then there's your root, but like they're, they're asking you to prove that, you know, with no argument, with no doubt, using the, using the intermediate value theorem and, and the definition of continuity we just defined, and so, but for non-mathematicians, I mean, we can just use the basic algebra and the, you know, if like, right, you get what I'm saying? Like, I'll prove it to you if I, I'm going to factor this, and if there's a non-imaginary root, then there's the then yeah, there's the root. I just proved it, but a mathematician would say no. Well, you didn't technically prove it, but all right. So that's it for continuity. I will see you guys in the next video.